Today we're going to talk about the torture artist trope and we're going to talk about it with the reference of the most well-known and significant individuals in the western art history after his death, uh, the painter of the famous painting we all admire, Starry Night, uh, Vincent Willem Van Gogh. Hey everyone, this is Tuzia and welcome back to my channel, my little art corner where I make drawing videos every week. Your girl is back with better equipment, lesser brain cells, and literally 3,996 public watch hours from monetizing our videos, so it'd be great if you'd help. Uh, my voice is kind of like not cooperating today because I have a cold, but this had to be done, so we're doing it. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I'm no art historian, nor I want to seem like I know it all. Uh, this is not for educational purposes, it's basically just from a place uh, where I, as an artist, feel like romanticizing torture artist trope undermines a lot of groups of people, artists, and people with mental illness alike. So yeah, and the message it sends throughout the community I think is kind of toxic, so I'll just talk about that. Again, we all know Van Gogh as a tortured artist due to his mental illness and hysteria, tales of bizarre incidents that he had during his lifetime, and while he was a failure throughout his entire life, his works made him an influential figure in the modern art landscape. Now, a lot of people see Van Gogh's life as a rather tragic one, and there are people who romanticize it all the same. Uh, the infamous story of how he ate yellow paint to be happy inside because he perceived yellow as a happy color and made it a staple on his color palette. In most narrative, he was a tortured artist who was a misunderstood genius. But the big questions we are going to revolve our entirety of video is, is eccentricity of Van Gogh's life, the reason uh, why it contributed so much for his posthumous fame, and is romanticizing Van Gogh's mental illness sends a message throughout the community that you have to be tortured to ever be a genius. Okay, while we dive deeper into this, I'll be creating a piece that is inspired by Van Gogh's Starry Night palette. I just want to put it out there that regardless of the analysis I'm giving below, I deeply admire Van Gogh and his creative abilities, his trademark uh, style, and I just want to explore more on the tortured artist trope and how it may be subconsciously sending messages throughout the community, artists, or any creator likewise. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh's life can be called a rather eccentric one. He was born in 1853 and while he was born to an upper middle class family, he dropped out of school at the age of 15. As a young man, he worked as an art dealer, often traveling, but later he became depressed after he was transferred to London. He turned to religion and spent time as a protestant missionary in southern Belgium. Uh, Vincent chose to explore the city and countryside rather than really getting ready for theological studies. He would go around meeting with Belgian miners and share gospel with them. And he donated all his belongings, camped out in the ground, and he took the moniker of Christ of the Coal Mine. He began to paint in 1881 at the age of 27, which was frowned over at the time. Uh, throughout his life, he slowly descended into poor, poor mental health, and he created his artwork during this period of being in and out of asylum, getting treatment and things as such. And then he took his own life in 1890, as he shot himself with a revolver, putting an end to his life and roughly a collection of 2100 artworks. While we talk about Vincent van Gogh, it's hard not to mention the infamous mutilation of his ear, the ingestion of harmful chemicals, the episodes he had when he was spiraling in his mental delusions and hysteria. It's easy to see him certainly as someone who has suffered a great deal in his life and throughout the time that he was alive, 
He was objectively a failure as an artist. Uh, Van Gogh's painting weren't living up to the expectations uh, of the standards at the time. It was probably uh, he's pro he's a post impressionist artist, so it was impressionism was there, but it was not. Uh, it did not deviate uh, from uh, uh, the basics of art, while Van Gogh's style was completely different, completely new, and he was not cherished or celebrated for that. Uh, and it was either problem with his choice of color palette or his stylized portrayal and things as such. But at this point of time, uh, people say that his work are the very foundation of modern art landscape. So. There comes a question when it comes to this particular um, s turn of events. Uh, does his depressed, unconventional life uh, play any part in that kind of narrative that we have of him right now? In 2014, there was a study uh, published on European Journal of Social Psychology by these two researchers. Um, I hope I say their I say their name right. Wayland Adrian Peter Van Tilburg and Eric Raymond Ego. I hope I did this right. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. Uh, so yeah, in this research, they talked about how an artist's eccentric lifestyle affected how people perceived uh, their creative abilities. Now, on this study, two groups of people were shown Van Gogh's sunflower painting. One were told about Van Gogh's tragic life story, while the other were not given that information. It was found that people who knew his tragic life story responded more positively to the painting than the group that did not have that information. They showed the same response when presented with a fictional painting and a fictional tragic life. Uh, people were willing to pay as much as four times uh, to those paintings based on the eccentric life story of the artist. Um, furthermore, people responded better to these tragic life stories of an artist if they were shown a rather unconventional art form than a conventionally good artworks. People related the eccentricity of the artist's life to their eccentric artworks. Uh, while all of this does not in any way discredit Van Gogh's work, it does provide us a more humane perspective to our response as a public to his art. Art is an expression and behind every art is someone whose life is as complex and special as any one of us in this crowded, crowded world. And the fact that we appreciate something unconventional because we find ourselves empathizing with the artist makes it such a beautiful phenomena that goes beyond the simple logic for that you have to make good art to be famous or to be celebrated. Uh, for Van Gogh, it's probably the commitment to his style, no matter how far it went from conventional. Uh, Van Gogh's style is so distinctive that you could never confuse one of his paintings to the other and it would be difficult for anyone to just come up with something remotely similar to Van Gogh's work and not say that he, they did not take inspiration from Van Gogh's because it's really really distinctive. There's a post that I've been seeing everywhere. I think it was from Tumblr. I don't know where it's from, but someone from art community has seen it all the time. It's always mentioned. So it goes like this. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh used to eat yellow paint because he thought it would give the happiness inside of him. Many people thought he was odd because the paint was toxic, but it was just like the rest of us. Imagine being so unhappy that even the strangest idea could possibly work like painting the walls of their internal organs yellow. It's really no different to falling in love or taking drugs. There is a greater risk of getting a heart broken or overdosing, but people still do it every day because there will always be that slight chance that it could make things better. Everyone has their yellow paint. The amount of misinterpretation to this seems to offend literally multiple groups at the same time. Let's just start simple by debunking the grounds of the yellow paint incident. So the question is, did Van Gogh really eat yellow paint to make himself happy inside? The direct answer is no. 
Uh, the letters Van Gogh wrote to his brother did mention that Van Gogh found himself eating turpentine and other toxins and not realizing he was doing so. Oh, this was when his hysteria was getting out of control. And it is heartbreaking to see this narrative twisted to look as if his suffering was some tragic character development, which brought him where he is at the moment. That he was just a sad artist trying to find ways to be happy. But it is more complex than that. Van Gogh did love yellow. He related it to emotional harmony, the sign of God, and his faith. He started to paint only when he got out of the mental asylum. He painted because he found comfort and healing in the process. And it was his expression and his distraction. We can see him as a deeply ill person trying his best. And maybe his style would have developed into more and flourished more and he would have explored more and evolved uh, and we would see various forms of his expression hadn't he taken his life at the age of 37. For people who do suffer from any form of mental illness, only they can know how hard it is to remain in that state and be unable to do the simplest of tasks and when such narratives are passed that misery is the place where one can show their creative potential, the gut-wrenching agonies of life put down in any art form are the ones that get most recognition and are immortalized. It tries to undermine the healing and the intervention that is needed in these cases. The fact is clear, art has nothing to do with instability, there is no direct correlation between sadness and creative potential. There are big artists, writers, musicians that are, that are celebrated for their work even though they don't come from a place of such agony. We do, don't discredit the work of writers like Jean Austen who did not come from such a place of instability like Van Gogh or any other tortured or starving artist. So I think it's high time we stop romanticizing something as dire as mental illness as the basis of any creative outburst, conventional or unconventional, either way. Although this analysis isn't the holy grail and we all are entitled to our perspective to Van Gogh, his work, and his life story, there must be a line when it comes to making narratives and basing it on something that isn't even true because everyone's life is much, very much complex and the best we can do is look out for each other and provide compassion and maybe not try too hard to define ourselves or others based on the hardships that we or they had in life. I just want to end this video with saying that I absolutely love Van Gogh and his creative potential. I th still think it's his dedication to his artwork and working on it, even though it was not conventional, even though he did not care. Maybe he did care what people thought about him, but he still went on with uh, whatever he needs to do. I think that's the kind of inspiration that we need to take from him rather than, you know, because he's sad, he's great. You know, that kind of inspiration does, does not work in our favor. So yeah, that's about it. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to be as consistent as possible and I'm planning to do one of these analysis video more often. Uh, let me know in the comments if I should do it, if I should not. If there's something that is lacking, I'll work on it. And I love your feedbacks in the comments. So with this, see you next week. Bye bye.